All right, this is a neuroma that we're removing from this patient's foot. In this video, I'm going to discuss what neuromas are. We'll discuss some conservative therapy for them, how we can treat them prior to surgery. I'll go over a little bit about what the anatomy is, and I'm going to narrate and demonstrate how we surgically remove one when all of the other treatment options are failing. So if you have any questions about this, you can drop it in the comments section below. I will do my best to answer them. So let's get started talking about what a neuroma actually is. So there are these nerves that run in your forefoot and they pass through the metatarsal bones, which are the long bones in your foot, and the nerves extend out to the toes. And the nerves that go between the third toe and the fourth toe that we're working on here, they have an adjoining branch. And because of that, it makes the space a little bit tighter between the third and fourth toes. And if you're wearing tight shoes, it can cause that area to become irritated, inflammation occurs, and then the nerve over time will become enlarged. It can happen between the other toes. It doesn't have to be the third and fourth toes. So if you're watching this and you're like, well, I think I'm getting that between my second and third toe, it can happen, but it's more common between the third and fourth toe. So what are the symptoms of this? Well, a lot of patients will first describe burning in their forefoot. They'll describe a feeling of walking on a pebble or that there's a marble in their shoe. Some will then move on to have numbness of their forefoot or the toes to that area, the third and fourth toes. They might, they might not describe it as numbness though. So you might be experiencing this and say, well, it's not really numb, but I feel like my sock is bunched up or some will say they feel like there's saran wrap on the bottom of their foot and they look at it and there's nothing there, it's because the nerves aren't working properly. Some patients will also describe it as a feeling that their foot is swollen because the nerves aren't relaying the, the sensory feedback properly because they're inflamed and you'll experience a weird sensation for lack of a better term. So what can we do to treat this? Well. The, the first option is to wear wider shoes and take an anti-inflammatory. If you're able to take that, I don't want to give medical advice. So please do not think that I'm telling you who are experiencing this to go out and take anti-inflammatories. Check with your doctor first. But the idea of an anti-inflammatory would be to reduce the inflammation that's occurring to the nerve combined with wearing a wider shoe. It takes away those um, factors that are causing this inflammation. So if you catch this early enough, it can treat it. Now, if, if it can treat it and resolve it, I should say. Now, if this goes on for many months, the nerve will become so inflamed, it actually enlarges and forms a cyst-like structure on the nerve that we call a neuroma. And think of it as if you have a green onion, right? You have that stem on the green onion, and then that stem propagates along to the bulb, which is the actual onion, if it's a baby onion. That's kind of what the neuroma is like. A normal nerve would be that green stem, and as you get toward the area that becomes inflamed, it's almost like a bulbous-like structure. And that structure is what's causing the pain because it's, it's inflamed, it's tightening up that space between those metatarsals that we're working on here. If you're able to watch this video and you're not just listening to me talk here, the area that we're working on is between the metatarsal bones. I have an instrument in between those metatarsal bones splaying it open. So if there's any residents or surgeons or students watching this, I'm actually using hemostats to do this. There is a Another instrument that's called a lamina spreader that's used in spine surgery, and we'll sometimes use that to spread the metatarsal bones. There are two different kinds. There's a flat one, and then there's one with 
that's that's a sharp one that has prominences on it but sometimes they're difficult to get into the inner space so i like to use a hemostat because i feel like i can control it better but if you're working by yourself and you don't have an assistant such as this case the lamina spreader is nice because it actually has prongs on the handle that stay fixed so you can keep it splayed open without touching it and you can leave it alone when you're using hemostats obviously you need an assistant to hold it open so that's what we're doing here so in regards to other treatment options you can see the nerve there that's what we're exposing one of the simple ways to get this if you're new at neuroma surgery and you're a resident watching this when you're dissecting down into that first inner space if you push up on the plantar aspect of the foot with your opposite hand like you can see we're doing here you can push that nerve up and if the nerve or the neuroma is large enough it'll pop right out so if you're having a difficult time finding it the simple way to do that is to push between the third and fourth toes on that inner space and it will come right out so back to some other conservative treatment options some of my patients will ask me well can we use orthotics there is a theory to using orthotics for a neuroma and what we do is we'll make an insert that just fits into the shoe and we'll put a neuroma pad we call them or a metatarsal pad and the idea is that it's going to splay the metatarsal bones where the nerve is being impinged on or irritated and by splaying the metatarsal bones the the theory is you'll reduce the stress to the nerve and the pain will go away the problem is if you don't get that pad in the proper position the pads going to actually push on the nerve it can aggravate it and even make it worse so it's not a real scientific way of treating it sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't what I typically offer my patients from a conservative standpoint in my office is wear some wide shoes stop wearing high heels females out there if you're listening to this and you wear those high-heeled shoes that are very pointy and narrow what's happening is you're putting all the stress on your forefoot that's that's one culprit the second culprit is that forefoot on your high heel is typically narrow and that will squeeze the forefoot putting pressure on those metatarsal bones which is aggravating this so you want to avoid high heels even just a simple heel can, can aggravate this or even avoid narrow fitting shoes the second thing that i'll explain to my patients is if, if everything's failing if you've tried taking anti-inflammatories anti, anti, excuse me, anti at the discretion of your physician using ice and it's not responding the next step is to do a cortisone injection and the question i'm always asked is well how long is that going to last well the goal of giving it isn't to just temporarily reduce the pain we're giving the injection to i'm going to stop here for a second and discuss what we're doing surgically that is the culprit right there that we're holding on so we're holding the nerve with a hemostat we've dissected it out of the toes if you were watching this we've dissected it out of both the third and fourth toes there are branches to each toe and now we're working proximally into the inner space we're going to go back as far as we can and remove the proximal most portion here you can see we have another branch that we're dissecting and you want to be careful when you're in this interspace because there's some important structures there obviously you have your neurovascular structures the artery and the vein and you also have some important tendons in there there's the lumbricals which go to the toes and then even more importantly there's these interossei tendons and those originate in the inner space and then they insert or attach to the to the toes and they if they're cut accidentally you can have a toe drift in one direction or the other so you want to make sure to avoid those structures so that you're not compromising the tendons and then sometimes that can lead to a drifting toe it's one of the complications with the neuroma surgery so right now if you're watching we're cutting out those branches to the toe 
and then we're going to go back as far proximal as we can. And we're using what's called a beaver blade or a 64 blade. They're sometimes numbered or a 69 blade, depend, depending on which blade you have. But it's a small round blade that can allow you to get in there and you have more precision over what you're cutting than the traditional scalpel blade. So once we have that nerve completely detached from its respective toes, we're going to go back into the inner space and completely release it and then completely remove it. That's what we're doing here. We're cutting those branches. So I'm going to refer back to what I was discussing about the cortisone injection. The question I'm asked a lot of times is, will this temporarily relieve my symptoms or is it going to permanently relieve them? My answer is, I'm giving the injection as a treatment to permanently put that fire out or that inflammation out so that the neuroma shrinks, goes away, and the nerve is back to its normal size. How do we know if it works? And how do we know which patients to use this on? Well, if you've had the neuroma for a long time, let's say you've had it for three or four years and you really didn't know what it was, didn't go in to see your physician. By the time you made it to a specialist, it's been that long. The likelihood of it working is low, but we'll still try it. Now let's flip to the other side of the spectrum. What if you've only had this for a few weeks and, and you present to a specialist? I probably wouldn't give you an injection after a few weeks. I would try the conservative route first, see you back in maybe four to six weeks. If we're still not getting anywhere, then I would do the injection. If one doesn't work, and you come back and you're maybe 50% better, we may give a second one, but I won't give any more beyond two because it's usually not going to work. And it's not healthy to keep putting a steroid into that inner space. Now, something else that gets brought up occasionally is, is the injection bad because it can atrophy or waste away the fat pad on the bottom of your foot and then you're going to get pain from the metatarsal heads? Well, there's really no scientific literature to support that. You may get atrophy if you continue to give cortisone injections. At what number? There you can see the nerve is completely being removed. At what number, how many injections do you have to give until you will get permanent atrophy of the fat pad? Well, there's really no scientific studies demonstrating this so it's more at the discretion of the physician treating this on how many you will give and like i said i won't give more than two for two reasons one we don't want to put the person at risk for this and two if if two of them haven't worked the likelihood of this working is extremely low there was another treatment option for injections that was done many years ago that was called sclerosing injections and what was being done was they were injecting alcohol, a denatured alcohol, into the interspace to sclerose. That's why it's called a sclerosing injection. To sclerose or meaning kind of harden or kill the nerve and that would reduce the patient's symptoms. Now the problem with this is I kind of look at it as a, as a simpleton or a common sense approach. You're injecting a denatured alcohol into an interspace not knowing if you're precisely hitting that nerve. Now you could use ultrasound to improve the precision, but you're still putting that solution to an area where there's tendons, there's arteries, veins, and you could be interfering with those structures. So I don't recommend the sclerosing injections. They're not being done anymore. The literature didn't really support it, although some people could potentially be doing that. And the problem is when it was indicated the recommendation was to give up to six injections and if six injections if the, i'm sorry if the first injection didn't fail you gave a second one but many people were doing up to six and it was just more of a haphazardous treatment so we don't really do that anymore so if the injections fail on my patients i've given two the next step is obviously surgically removing the nerve so when we surgically remove the nerve it is a simple procedure. It's done outpatient in the operating room. As you can see we're here in this procedure, we're doing this in the operating room. It's about a 15 to 20 minute procedure to remove this neuroma, sometimes a little longer depending on the intricacies of finding all those digital branches of the nerve. 
The recovery period involves about two to three weeks of letting the incision site heal. I use a non-absorbable stitch. That's what we're putting in here. This is nylon. And the reason I like to use a non-absorbable stitch is the patients can become a little more active sooner and we're not as concerned about that incision site popping open. Sometimes with an absorbable stitch, the incision site can come open a little bit easier. They're not as strong. And as the body starts to dissolve those, they can sometimes pull open. And I want my patients to be as active as possible. Once the incision starts to heal, we'll let them get it wet. Normally, we'll take these out around 14 to 21 days after surgery. They'll get a rather large gauze bandage the day of surgery, and then I'll see them about five days later in the office. This gets removed, and usually at that point in time, I can allow them to wear a white cotton sock, which will allow us to see any drainage if any is occurring, and then we will encourage them to put bandaging back on, and they can start normal activity in a shoe. I wouldn't do any exercising, however, until the stitches come out but usually they can get back to work within five to seven days and it's not as long of a recovery as most foot surgeries because we're not working on bone. This is all soft tissue. If you have any questions about neuroma surgery or treatment for neuromas, or if you think you're suffering from one, drop a comment in the comment section below. I don't give medical advice on this channel, but I can answer some questions.